Good morning, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Spirit of Fire Fellowship. I'm Pastor Mike May here in the great city of Richmond, Virginia. And we wanna welcome everybody to our online worship experience and broadcast. We thank God for you showing up today. We don't believe it's by chance that you're here, but we do believe that there will be a relevant word that'll be spoken to your life, that'll help transform and it'll help change your life and make it better. So on behalf of my wife, Pastor Raquel and myself, we just wanna say welcome to everybody, our online audience. We thank God for you showing up today. For all of our first timers, we wanna just say welcome, welcome, welcome. For anyone that's watching for the first time, we listen, we just want you to just sit back and relax and enjoy this word today. And we want you to receive what God has for you today. We wanna to acknowledge you. Um, for any of our first timers that are out there, we wanna acknowledge that you, acknowledge your presence, that you're tuning in today. So listen, if you would, just log on. Let us know where you're logging in from. And we just want to say hi to you. Just love on you and appreciate you. To all of our Spirit of Fire Nation, we thank God for you. Those that are local, those that are global, um, we just thank God for you wherever you're tuning in from. So I want you to do this real quick. I want you to go ahead and click your share. Share this video with someone right now. Just share it to your page, to your uh, social media platforms. Let's get ready for the Word of God. Listen, whether they're watching in live, tuning in live, or going to watch it in the restream, watch it later, this word will help transform and help change someone's life. It'll help motivate you. It'll help change the way that you think. It'll help turn you into another man and another woman. And so we're just expecting God's spirit to now touch you wherever you are, that God's anointing, his ability and his power will meet you where you are. And so we'll believe in God with you for great things to take place. So let's go ahead and dive into this. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we just thank you for this, another opportunity to minister to these, your precious sheep. We thank you that revelation knowledge of your word will flow freely from heaven, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. None of me, all of you. Holy Spirit, speak through my vocal cords, think through my mind to bring wisdom, knowledge and good understanding of the word of God. We do approach your holy written word reverently and we do acknowledge right now and we covet your gifts to be in operation and demonstration. And so we pray right now that every ear is anointed to hear this word. Every heart is open and ready to receive the engrafted word of God, which is able to save our souls. So we bless you and we thank you for it now. Now, Father, I thank you for the anointing of the teacher, but also the anointing of the prophet to speak forth light into your people, to motivate, to inspire to speak into, to deposit something that'll help um, be the catalyst of change in their lives. And so we just give you the praise, glory, and honor. Thank you that we're strengthened with might by your spirit and our inward man, also quickening our mortal bodies and making them alive. So we just speak life over each and every individual under the sound of my voice. Thank you for healing. Thank you for deliverance. Thank you for freedom. And so we give you praise, glory, and honor for it now. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. Hey, y'all, listen, we are continuing in our series dealing with becoming, understanding who you are in Christ, how you were wired, how you were made, and that you are now coming into a place where you're growing to the point of manifesting in the earth who you are as a believer on the Lord Jesus Christ, that God created you with purpose. He created you with a plan. But also now he wants us to begin to morph into who he predestined and predetermined for us to be. What do I mean by that? He wants us to be transformed. He wants us to be changed by the renewing of our minds. The Bible tells us this in Romans 12 and 2. And that the Apostle Paul says it. Don't be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. That word transformation comes from the word metamor metamorpho, where we get our word metamorphosis. There is a transformation and a change that can take place in your life. And so in dealing with this, this word came to me a while ago. And um, just for, for me to just start ministering along these lines, because God has called me personally, my personal assignment to the body of Christ, to the world at large, is to teach God's people who they are. And he says, now, this is a commandment that was given to me some years ago. And so I want to be faithful to that call and that command. And so at the same time, I want to make sure that I'm giving you relevant word and message that will help, like, just push into your destiny, man. I want to see you better. I want to see all of us win. I, listen, it's God's desire for everybody to win, for everybody to eat, for everybody to grow, for everybody to manifest what it is they've been called and created by God to do. And so one of the greatest things that I'm telling you now, everyone under the sound of my voice, it's time, for the, it's time to be elevated. It's time for you to step up 
to the level of living that God called us to be at. It's time for us to believe big, think big, dream big, but not just think, dream and believe, but also to act on those things, to begin to manifest what it is God put in us and put in you to do. God wants to bring out of you everything he put in you. And I come against even the spirit of laziness that will try to hinder you, that spirit of slothfulness that will try to hold you back, that spirit of containment that will try to get you so distracted by what you've been going through that it'll wear you out and weary you and tire you out so that you don't have enough strength to fight. So I speak strength into your life today. And that's one of the things I want to do. I want to help motivate you. I want to help challenge you to now step up, to step up and to step out. Amen. So I want you to get ready for this today. Now, as I'm going through this, this is something that the Holy Ghost just dropped in my heart as I was studying. I was just reading and meditating. Um, I think he kind of gave me a, not, it's not a detour, but he inserted something in here for me to talk about today and to start off with. And so we've been doing this on several weeks now, dealing with becoming and dealing with us growing into who we are in Christ. But I want to start here today in 1 Samuel chapter 10. 1 Samuel chapter 10. I'm going to start in verse 1. And as I was reading this, I just want to be open to what the Holy Spirit wants to say today and what he wants to depart into his people. And it says this, it says, then Samuel took a vow of oil and poured it upon his head, speaking of Saul, um, because Saul now, um, God has dealt with him. God has spoken to Samuel and said, I'm going to show you this guy. His name is Saul. This is a person that um, I want to anoint to lead, number one, to be a captain, to lead my armies into victory. But then two, I'm going to anoint him to rule over my people. And so now Samuel or Saul seemed like one of the most unlikeliest guys to now take on this role. And he was even hiding from it. He didn't even want to be chosen to do this thing. But God says, I've chosen him. And so we pick up here in um, 10 verse one. And when Samuel now interacts with Saul and he finds Saul, it says that then Saul, Samuel took a vial of oil and poured it upon Saul's head. And he kissed him. And he said, um, is it not because the Lord hath anointed thee to be captain over his inheritance? It wasn't you that chose this, but the Lord chose you for this. Now, I want you to keep this in remembrance where you're concerned. It's not that you chose to do it, but God called you to do it. He created you to do it. And so what God created you to be, you need to become that. You need to now realize that, wait a minute, I know I didn't choose this path, but God chose it for me. Now I need to step up and to now receive, watch this, whatever God calls you to do, he anoints you to do. That means he equips you to do. He empowers you to do. And so now God is using his man of God, his mouthpiece, Samuel, the prophet of God. He was called the seer, but he was turned and says he was once called the seer, but now they are called prophets. And so now he saw Samuel see something in Saul. God reveals something to him about Saul and that this is the person I've chosen. This is the one I want to anoint. Now, at this particular point, don't forget now, this is under old covenant where they were spiritually dead. We under new covenant are spiritually alive when we accept and receive Jesus. So now that we accepted and received Jesus and we accept and receive his spirit, the Holy Spirit to live, abide and dwell in us. We have this ability. We have God's nature. God has anointed and equipped us with everything that we need on the inside of us to do the thing that he called for us to do. Now, I want us to take a look at this. And he says, is not this the one that the Lord has anointed to be captain over his inheritance? And then in verse two, he says, when thou art departed from me today, he says, then thou shalt find two men by Rachel's sepulcher in the border of Benjamin and Zelza. And they will say unto thee, the asses which thou wentest to seek are found. And lo, thy father have left the care of these asses and the sorrow of for you saying, what shall I do for my son? Then you shall go forward from thence. And so now he begins to tell him, okay, I want you to go to Bethel. I want you to go to this place and one carrying three kids and another carrying three loaves. We in verse three now and three loaves of bread and another carrying a bottle of wine and they will salute thee and give thee the two loaves of bread, which thou shall receive of their hands. Now, Sorry, and then it be again? now oh. watch this. Now, this is my, my um, Siri acting up on my phone. That's funny. 
um, in the midst of so I cut off my phone, off my watch. Now watch this. Now I always say Siri always do that when it just come on when I don't even want it to come on. Now watch here in verse four. And then he says this. And they will salute thee and give thee two loaves of bread, which thou shall receive of their hands. And thou watch this. After thou shall come to the hill of God, where is the garrison of the Philistines? And it shall come to pass when thou art come thither to the city that thou shall meet. Now, this is going to be interesting. Thou shalt meet a company of prophets coming down from the high place with a psalter and with a tabret and with a pipe and a harp before them, and they shall prophesy. Now, a company of prophets and the spirit of the Lord will come upon thee and thou shalt prophesy with them. And watch this. And thou shalt be turned into another man. The company of prophets will come and they will function in their giftings, their anointings. And because you're surrounded by that group, what's on them is going to come on you. And you're going to be turned into another man. And that's what I was hearing, that you're going to be turned into another man and another woman. That's what becoming is all about for a transformation and a change to take place, a supernatural change. And watch this, though. It was based off of the company that he was keeping. And let it be verse seven. When these signs are come unto thee, thou watch this, that thou do as occasion serve thee for God is with thee. And thou shalt go down before me to Gilgal and behold, I will come down unto thee to offer burnt offerings and to sacrifice sacrifices a peace offering seven days that thou tarry till I come to thee and show thee what thou shalt do. Now watch this. And it was so that when he had turned his back to go from Samuel, God gave him another heart. And all those signs came to pass that day. Let me stop here. Saul had an encounter with the true and the living God through his prophet Samuel. And through the company of prophets. And he was turned into another man. But when it was said and done, after this transaction took place, after this encounter took place, and I love this, it says that God gave him another heart. God is beginning to deal with the hearts of his people. And what I begin to hear was there are many people who have encountered hardship. You've encountered situations with people. And for some of you, it has hardened your heart. And you don't realize that your heart changed from the beginning. And God's saying, I'm trying to bring you back to that initial excitement that you once had. But because of everything you've been through, it has now affected you more than you realize. It affected you in not moving forward. It affected you in not trusting people. It affected you in not trusting God. It affected you in holding back instead of advancing and moving forward. And so now you're more apprehensive than ever because of everything that you've been through. And so now all of a sudden now your heart has become hardened through adversity. And God says, I want to bring a softness to it so that now your heart can be for the people I've called for you to now serve. If the people you served are the ones that injured you the most, then Satan will use that to cause you not to use what you've been anointed to do to serve your generation. God is saying, I need for you to be healed. Listen, I, I, I got to share this. This is a time of transparency. I, I was sitting the other day and I was just talking to my wife and I said, um, God just personally led me on the fast. And it was a, a group of individuals, a group of guys. And we were fasting and praying for about a week. And one of the things I told him is that sometimes with fasting, you experience different things while you're going through the fast. But some stuff you don't see until after you come off of it. And one of the things is I was listening to someone and they were sharing some things, even about pastoring and about ministering. And all of a sudden, I didn't realize how much it pricked my heart. And then all of a sudden, I began to sit. And a part of me, and all of a sudden, tears begin to well up in my eyes because I didn't realize I'm trying to figure out, God, man, what in the world? Why is this message this guy is teaching affecting me like this? 
And all of a sudden, I just said out of my mouth, Father, I forgive each and every individual that has ever hurt me. I forgive any person that I've served and loved on. And then they turned around and said whatever and did whatever. Now, Father, I've already repented for the stuff that I've done. But now I release forgiveness, not realizing I may I was still holding some level of hurt. Because sometimes for men, it's not as always as easy for us to tell people that, hey, you hurt me. I'm hurt by what you did or by what you said, because now you got to put on this facade and you got to put on this this macho front. And you got to put on this strength because now and to act like nothing ever affects you. Because now what, what you can do is you can secretly be harboring things that you've never dealt with because you failed to confront that thing. And so I said, God, in the name of you, I said, I forgive him. And all of a sudden now, and I told my wife, the same thing happened to me. This is the second time this has ever happened in my life. It wasn't to the same degree, but it was the same situation I had with my father years ago while I was fasting and praying at the ministry that we were a part of at that time. And all of a sudden I was dealing with chest pains and trying to figure out why was I dealing with this at such a young age? It was like, and I wasn't out of shape at that time. I was in shape doing my stuff. But all of a sudden I didn't realize I was harboring unforgiveness towards my father. And during this time of fasting, I just said, Lord, I forgive him. And the pain that was in my chest came out instantly. Unforgiveness, your heart towards people will block you from moving forward to what God has called you to do. And in order for you to walk in the fullness of it, you're going to have to let some things go. And your heart is going to have to be changed now. And so God is saying, whether it's to your husband, whether it's to your wife, whether it's with your children, whether it's with co-workers, whether it's with anybody that you're serving, whatever it is that some for some of you is towards God. Because you telling him, God, why did you let this happen? I'm serving you. I'm doing all of this stuff for you. And you allowed this to happen to me. And what you're saying is you blaming God and now you hurt. And the one who's now here to help you, to assist you and equip you to get the job done, you even rejecting him. And that's a dangerous place to be. God saying, I love you and I want to touch your heart. I want you to release forgiveness for that person that you've been holding this stuff against all this time. And so now you can't even receive their love any longer because now your heart towards them is so hardened through adversity that now you don't know how to receive even when a, a true moment of tenderness, a true moment of love is coming towards you. And then two, God is saying this, you got to change your heart because hurt people hurt people. And so if you constantly hurt that bitterness spills out when you when you least expect it and you trying to figure out why are you so sarcastic? Why are you so this? And sometimes that's a mechanism as that's now there for self-preservation and to protect you. So what you're saying is I'd rather give you a quick jab to hurt you before I give you a chance to hurt me. And God is saying, I need for you to wipe all of that junk out of your life. You need to become vulnerable again. Ooh, Lord, have mercy. Some of you need to become vulnerable again. And it's like, God, I can't become vulnerable again. I can't put myself in that position to be hurt again. And God is saying, when you serve in me, listen, you're of no reputation. This is why we talk about dying, quote unquote, to self or dying to your own aspirations. And when you become a servant, your heart now is towards the people that you're serving. And so now God wants to grow you up in his love and his character so that you no longer take offense to things that are happening to you. Because that's what we do. We take offense. Listen, no one can offend me if I don't allow them to. You can call me whatever you want. You can say whatever you want. But if I don't allow it to hurt me. It won't hurt me. Remember, he said, behold, I give unto you power. Glory to God to trample upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Not just physically, but emotionally. And to now come back and learn how to respond and to have your heart changed in such a way 
that I refuse to allow you to hurt me? And sometimes, yes, I know that means that means you got to remove yourself from the vicinity of some people. But God is growing you up to the point. He says this is your graduation time. Some of you can say stuff like, I don't see how people can walk in love. I don't see how you forget somebody to do that kind of stuff. If that was me, I wouldn't do it. See, what you're doing is you're rehearsing in advance your response to a negative situation. If you already rehearsing, I'm going to act. Watch this. I'm going to act the way that you act. I'm going to respond in the flesh. If you rehearse that in your mind, that's how you're going to respond. But if you get to the point of starting to renew your mind, to transform and to change, to say, I refuse to take an account of a suffered wrong. Watch this. It takes strength to love. It takes strength to love and to forgive. It takes strength to now take no account of a suffered wrong. It takes strength to say, even when you wrong me, I will still lay hands on you and cause that sickness and disease to come off your body. Even though you've been the source of my pain, I'm going to be the source of your healing. Glory to God. <laughs> come on now. Come on, Holy Ghost. He says this. Can you once again rise up? Can you once again serve me and serve my people? Watch this. Without the very, ooh, without, ah, the stain of the past, the past hurts. He says, I need you to, be, I need you to let it go. I need you to forgive now. So in order for my power to flow to the level that I want it to flow, let it go, Mike. Let it go. Let go of what people are going to say about you if you obey me. Let it go. God dealt with his heart. God transformed Saul and he changed his heart. He turned him into another man. He now watches his power and his ability came upon Saul, just like his nature came in you. His power and ability came and transformed your life. And we are born again believers. And now we got to say, wait a minute, God, I'm going to develop in this character. I'm going to develop in this love and I'm going to be transformed. Now watch this. Oh, man. <laughs> and verse 10, watch this though. And when they came thither to the hill, behold, a company of prophets met him talking about Saul and the spirit of the Lord, a spirit of God came upon him and he prophesied among them. At first, Saul didn't have his ability to prophesy, but all of a sudden God's anointing came upon him. He comes into a company of prophets, people like him. And now he begins to prophesy and it came to pass verse 11. When all that knew him before time saw that, when all that knew him before time, when all that knew you before time, when people watch this, when people who always hold you to their last encounter with you, sometimes they don't realize you've been transformed and you've been changed. And so in their mind, they've kept the image of their last encounter with you. And it may not have been a good encounter. And so if they left you at that stage because they were hurt, because they felt like they were betrayed, because they felt like you didn't treat the relationship with the proper respect that you should have, because they had a level of expectation that you didn't have in that relationship. And so now they've been talking about you behind your back, but watch this, God is saying this, you have been changed and transformed, and watch this, you don't have to prove yourself to them, watch this, your fruit is gonna show, and they're gonna see you've been transformed and changed. Okay, come on, come on, come on. And watch this. And it came to pass when all they knew him before time saw that, behold, he prophesied amongst the prophets. Then the people said one to another, what is this that is come unto the son of Kish? Is Saul also among the prophets? Wait a minute. The last time we encountered this guy, he was not like this. Something has changed in him. Something has happened. You mean to tell me this dude is a prophet now? He prophesied like the prophets. He's been transformed and turned into another man. And so all of a sudden, watch this. Your God is getting, oh, there's so much running through me. Watch this. This is your time of rebranding. This is your time. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, for some of you, your name has been dragged through the mud with some people. And God is saying, if you will yield to my power, if you will yield to my presence, if you will yield to my word, if you will yield to my instruction, you won't have to tell people you change. They will see the change. OK, you got to hear me. Some of you trying to convince people you change. Stop doing it. Just be and let them see. Oh, that, that rhyme there. Just be and let them see. 
Just be. Sometimes I can show you better than I can tell you. Because sometimes you're so busy trying to convince people, no, I've changed. I've really changed. I'm not doing that any longer. And we understand that sometimes talk is cheap. It's like, okay, the proof and the pudding is to eat it. Let them taste and see that the Lord is good. Let them taste of your life. Just be. Become who God created you to be. And they will see. And watch this. God will begin to reconstruct and rebrand your image for you. Watch this. Jesus was made of no reputation. Watch this. We got to have that mindset that is not based on my reputation. Reputation is just what people think about you. That's all it is. Is what they think about you and their perception of you can change. But what? listen, even if it doesn't, you still need to move forward and continue being who God called you to be. And you need to begin to be free from the opinions of people. But you now begin to say, OK, God, I'm going to serve you in this generation. And if that person rejects me and my servanthood towards them, I'll shake the dust off of my feet and I'll go to the person who will receive me. And God is saying this. You got to understand. And I know that you understand when I say this, that you need to go where you are celebrated and not just where you're tolerated. And so God is saying this, there are many people who need to receive what you have, but you cannot be hindered by your mistakes of the past to now stop you from moving forward. God is saying there is a transformation that is taking place and you're going to have to let it go and you're going to have to number one, forgive. And then you're going to have to now say, OK, God, I now need to have a better self image of myself, because when you understand your identity, then watch this. You'll be, be you'll begin to function at the level of how you see yourself. Let me, let me break it down. When you see yourself as a king and a priest, when you see yourself as royalty, when you see yourself as an ambassador, you will begin to believe, ask, and live at the level of how you view yourself. You are asking alignment to who you are. You are asking alignment to where you believe you're supposed to be living. You'll begin to talk different. You'll begin to think different. You'll begin to function different. And you won't tolerate certain things around you because you realize that, wait a minute, I'm a king. And as a king, kings rule. Kings have dominion. Kings change laws. They, le they legislate laws. And so through declarations and decrees. So I decree be based off of the identity that I have of myself. I can function in this grace because if I know I'm a prophet like Samuel, then I know God has equipped me to prophesy. But not only that, he's equipped me with the gifts of the spirit, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, discerning the spirits to function in my life and ministry to meet the needs of his people. So when I come to you, I come boldly knowing what I'm dressed with, knowing what I'm equipped with to serve you. I got what you need. And so now I'm going to serve you in the spirit of humility and love. If I forgive you, if I love you, then I'll serve you. OK, 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 OK. Y'all got to hear what I'm saying. So you got to hear what I'm saying. You got to hear what I'm saying. Stop making it all about you. See, now if you, you got to come out your own head. You got to come out of yourself. Some of you walking in, ah, help me, Lord, help me, Lord. Sometimes, you know, I, I see things, I, I hear things. Um, uh, sometimes people are waiting on something. It's like you waiting on this move of God in your life. It's like, okay, God, I've been, I've been, I've been waiting on everything you've been promising me. Okay, and God is saying you've been waiting, but you ain't been doing. You haven't been being realizing who you are and functioning in it. You already got everything you need to now manifest what you've been believing for. It's already in you in seed form, but you now need to bring it out. And God is saying, I need you to begin to think different because remember, let's go back to the beginning from God's original intent and desire that this fivefold blessing in the book of Genesis, it talks about in verse 26 to 28. I'm going to just go to 28 when it talks about God created man in his own image. And it says, and God blessed them. He blessed man, male and female, blessed he them. He created he them, male and female created he them, and he blessed them by saying, God blessed us by saying, watch this, be fruitful, multiply, replenish, 
subdue, have dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowls of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. So God already dressed you for success and equipped you. It is your job to take responsibility and say, I'm going to manifest everything that God placed in me to do. If he placed in you to start a daycare, start it. What you waiting on? Start it. If he told you to launch the business, launch it. He gave you fingers to type. He gave you eyes to see. Google what you need to do. Meet with people. Set the strategy. Set the order. Set the structure. Move on it. See, you're waiting for this dream manifestation to take place. You're waiting for this big moment, and it's not the big moments. It's the small moments of obedience that begin to build brick by brick. And so that when you stop and see 10 years from now, five years from now, two years from now, one year from now, because you started the process, you're waiting on God to motivate you to do it. Uh Uh-uh. God is saying, I've already placed in you. This is where discipline comes in. Discipline moves you and motivation leaves you. Let me say that again. Discipline moves you when motivation leaves you. You are not going to always feel like doing what God told you to do. You're not going to feel like obeying his word. You're not going to feel like loving somebody, but it's going to be an act of your will and enforced obedience to say, I will not hold that against them. And when this thought comes up, I don't know how y'all do it, man. My goodness. We do it by obeying. That's how you grow in it. You grow by reason of use and obedience, systematically doing what God has said and consistently walking in it and saying, even when I don't feel like serving you, I got to get up and serve because that's the heartbeat of a son and a daughter of God. I'm telling you, servanthood in these last days, serving this generation. See, so many people want to be served, but do you serve? What is your heart? God is saying this. The whole purpose of God turning Saul into another man was to lead his people. He turned his heart. He transformed them, changed them, turned his heart. He gave him a new heart. It's time for a heart transplant, folks. What's been hindering your heart? What's what's hurt your heart? It could be somebody going through marital difficulty. What is it that trust? You got to come to a point. You're going to have to say, you're going to have to make a decision to make it work. There there was this old saying. Now, I'm going to be very discreet with how I say it. It's almost like, and just hear me when I say, either poop or get off the toilet. It's almost like, do what you're supposed to do. What what you going to do? You going to quit? Because you can't stay in this purgatory, this limbo. Either you're going to make it work or go your separate ways. God hates divorce. So it's going to come to a point, sometimes because it's so uncomfortable, you're going to have to do the uncomfortable stuff, the uncomfortable conversations. And so watch this to transform. Sometimes, man, I remember hearing this. um, A marriage counselor, um, I heard him say this years ago. Sometimes. You got to go through a uh, you may have to go through a week of hell to experience 40 years of heaven. What do I mean by that? Sometimes it's very uncomfortable to do the work to produce the heaven that you want. Because you may have to have an uncomfortable conversation. You may have to reveal some things, some stuff you may just have to deal with. And so in order to get to that place that sometimes you got to deal with the mess that's been created so that now you can move to that place of prominence, that place of paradise. It can be in your finances. Sometimes you've been neglecting seeing where you really are, getting a snapshot of where you really are. I was, I was, um, I was doing, I talk about myself, I don't care. I was looking at a video of myself preached somewhere and I did not, I could not stand the way that I looked. Now the interesting thing is this, When I would look at myself in an actual mirror, getting ready on a day to day end basis, I did not see myself looking like I did when I was on video. I understand some people say with video ad, all of this and no, it don't add that much. And I realized I was like, wait a minute, I did not realize I looked like that. 
Because sometimes if you don't get a good view of where you really are, you won't make necessary changes. See, I enjoy saying that this week in this time of praying, fasting and discipline myself that I lost five pounds this week. And I'm like, glory to God. So I'm like, hey, that's a start. And I like the way that I was feeling. I like the way I was sleeping better. And that man, I was like, I, no aches or pains and all that kind of stuff. I like that feeling. But sometimes if you don't take an accurate account, because sometimes you view yourself, even scripture says, don't don't see yourself more highly than you ought to see. Or don't, don't you know, you got to be mindful because sometimes you don't take honest assessment of where you really are so that you can become because you think you at a place. And that's one of the worst places to be to really think that, you know, it to think that you got it right and you doing it wrong. Because now when somebody else comes in to give you an honest assessment, yo, you're not looking too good. You're not healthy. Oh, uh -uh, I'm good. Mm -mm. Your skin shouldn't look like that. Or some should be. That's not how God designed it to be. Uh, -uh. The way that y'all talking to one another, that ain't good. What you mean? It ain't good. We cool. Mm -mm, that's not good. That's not how love is supposed to express itself. And so sometimes you got to stop and say, wait a minute, let me change my character. Let me become who God created me to me to be. Because watch it, I got to have honest assessment of where I really am. Some of you need to take inventory. Now watch this, you take two inventories. I told this to some guys this week. You need to write down some things. Write down some of your accomplishments. What are some things that you've accomplished over this past year? And begin to thank God for it. But then two, write down what concerns you in your life because God says I'll perfect everything that concerneth thee. What are some things, whether it's your health, whether it's your family, your marriage, your children, what is it? Your finances. God, I haven't accomplished what I believe to accomplish. What is it that you feel as though you were supposed to accomplish? Come on, get specific because God is saying this. J listen, I believe with everything in me, Jesus is coming back. And now is a time that there are windows and doors of opportunity and favor that are open for you to achieve what it is that you were always supposed to achieve. But watch this. If it was always going to take one year for you to get things together in order for you to walk it out, even though it's been 10 years, it's still going to take maybe that year to get it done. I know we preach acceleration and God will accelerate, but you got to allow God to accelerate what he wants to accelerate. But you have to develop and prepare yourself like maybe he won't accelerate it. So if it's going to take a year for me to get this thing done, I need to start it now because it's still going to take a year, five years from now. So you might as well get moving now in what you need to do versus stop wasting time hoping some magical thing is going to happen and that God just going to step in and clean everything up. That ain't how his word works. He has placed laws and principles in the earth and you need to now take responsibility and be accountable and say, now as for me and my house, we're going to serve God. We're going to serve God by honoring him, honoring his presence, honoring his word, honoring his principles, honoring his laws and begin to work this thing out step by step and brick, brick by brick. I told y'all last week, God told me to tell you he is going to teach you how to build from nothing. From where you currently are, I declare in the name of Jesus that, watch this, the spirit of innovation will come upon you, creativity, concepts, and ideas to show you how to build what you need to build. But watch this, before you try to build the outside, you got to build the inside because he's building you from the inside out. He has to strengthen you, get your mind right to sustain you to where he's taking you. If you have not learned how to be disciplined and not enough, you are not going to be disciplined in more than enough. He's saying, I'm working on you on some things. He says this, <laughs> Ooh, some of you are in some final examinations and you've been flunking the same test for years. He says, will you pass the test now? Because there is so much harvest in store for you. But you see, ah, you got to do it. He said, you got to do it. You got to do it. I know it might be hard. You're going to have to talk to that person. You're going to listen. You keep saying, I don't want to talk to my mother. I don't want to talk to my siblings. I got jacked up relationships because every time I talk to them, it turned into something else. 
But God is trying to do this. He's trying to change you in the midst of this. He's saying, can you learn how to be still enough? Can you learn how to be disciplined enough over your emotions to not affect, allow what they say to affect you to that degree? I know that their words carry weight with you at times, but there are certain things. You honor your mother and father in the Lord. Watch this. But so if they say stuff to you that's not in the Lord, if they say stuff to you that's contradictory to what God's word says, you are not obligated to receive it. Watch this, because as a parent, I'm supposed to train you in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Why am I saying this? Somebody needs to hear it. And so sometimes you allow the criticism of you to stop you from moving forward because you are getting your identity from what they said. And you need to get your identity from what God says. And I know it hurts and I'm not being insensitive to the pain. But God is saying this. There is greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Satan can use whoever yields themselves to be used by him to sow negative seeds into your mind, into your heart to shut down the process of God. And just like Jesus had to tell Peter, get thee behind me, Satan. Sometimes you got to say to that influential spirit, get from behind me, get thee behind me, Satan. I'm not allowing what you're saying to negatively affect me from moving forward in this thing. And I'm going to honor you. I'm going to still show you respect. I'm going to love you. And some people, yes, you need to love from afar. And God will say, go ahead and send them a gift. Send them a notice. But now you cannot keep receiving negative thoughts and negative words and negative images. Okay, I'm dealing with something with somebody with this. He's saying this, you need to learn who you are. And as you demonstrate, oh, he said the reason why they're speaking negative because they have a negative image of themselves. So they only produce what they are. They produce how they think. Let me, let me say it that way. They produce, they, they begin to speak what they think. Because they haven't realized who they are. So they'll put their negative image on you. And now without realizing that you've received that negative image and you've cried out to God, God has been so hard because I'm trying to do this alone. God says you're not alone. He says, not only have I always been there, he says, I've already surrounded you with people that sometimes you don't realize because you're trying to get the answer from a person who is not equipped right now at this point to give you what they don't have. So God is saying, I'm surrounding you with people to sow into your life to get you to that place of where you need to be. I hope you're receiving that, whoever this is for. Because God wants to cultivate a culture of excellence, honor, and advancement for you. This is your time, church. You better hear me. Somebody, I want somebody to type. I want you to type, this is my time. This is my time. This is my time. This is my time. There, there, there are a couple of things you need to work on. I'm going to close with this. You need to have a plan of action for your spiritual development. You need to have a plan of action for your soul development. The mind, will, intellect, emotions, imagination. You need to have a plan of action for your physical enhancement and advancement. Whether it's 30 minutes a day exercise, drink a gallon of water, eliminate fried foods and bread. That's what you start with. Then you, you set a plan of action. I will not eat sweets. I will do it. I may uh, reward myself once out of a week to do it. OK, I'm going to spend 30 minutes a day praying and the time spent before God. I'm going to put on worship music and begin to worship him. I'm going I'm to learn how to have an attitude of gratitude because when you're thankful and grateful, you learn how to be content in the state that you went in while you're advancing to the next level. A thankful heart is a grateful heart. And see, when you have a thankful heart, it helps to alleviate the weight and the pain that you're going through. And now you need to have a plan even where your finances are concerned. What's the plan of action of growth and advancement? What are the streams of income I need to now accomplish? What are the things that I need to start and begin to move forward in? What's my goal? What's my objective? If I need to put an emergency fund away, my first goal, $1,000 for an emergency fund. Next is my goal of three to six months of wages of expenses saved and put away. 
whatever it is, start your plan of action. Now, this is what I can do. I'll go ahead since I can use my job and put money into an account that I don't even look at a lot, that I know that is systematically putting money in there. Set it and forget it. What's the plan of action? What's the plan of action for your relationship? We're going to spend every Friday night. We're going to have a date night. We're going to begin to talk to some things through. Stop and think about it. Instead of just, con just con condemning, criticizing, find something good to say about one another every day. One thing. Begin to thank God for what's already happening. Maybe you're not where you used to be. I mean, maybe you're not where you want to be, but thank God you're not where you used to be. What's your plan of action where your purpose is concerned? I'm going to walk in what I've been called to do. Number one, God, what is it that you created me to do? I'm going to find whether it's a spiritual gifts assessment that I take to see what I'm good at, to see what naturally flows out of me. And now all of a sudden, now, Father, I'm going to spend some time in prayer and fasting. To now say, okay, God, what is my, my purpose? If your purpose is to serve, well, all I want to do is serve people. I just have a real strong heart of servanthood. Okay, connect to a vision that serves. Okay, come on, let's start a ministry here. Let's get some things. Go serve the community. You may say, Pastor, I want to serve. I, wanna, I feel like I want to meet the needs of people in the community. Come on, let's do it. Maybe you're the one to start it. Maybe you're the one to initiate it. See, Find out sometimes what your greatest frustration is. That, that's a problem you're created to solve. I can come help with this. See, this is how you get into it. And whatever you do, do it as unto the Lord. See, in this, it helps you in becoming. It helps you in growing. It helps you in developing. See, these are things that God is saying. I'm telling you, some of y'all praying for answers that have already been given. And this is your time. This is your time. Amen. 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 You are going to be fruitful and multiply. Amen. It's time to come on out of debt. Pay off that car. It's time. Focus. Whatever you give yourself to, give yourself to it. Sometimes, I don't know, if you're the person that's scatterbrained in the sense of you got so many coals in the fire, you got so many things that you're trying to do, uh, -uh centralize it. Pick one and give yourself to it. Then once that's up and going, then go to the next thing. Write down, organize your thoughts. Paper never forgets. Your phone won't forget. Type it out. Set a list of things you want to accomplish. And then say, okay, number one, set it in the priority that's in your heart. This is the first thing I want to accomplish. Focus on that. Now, you might have some other things in motion, but focus on that. And watch how you start accomplishing stuff. And then you begin to say, wait a minute, I'm fulfilling purpose all along. Fulfill. I hope y'all received that because, I mean, God was dropping some stuff. There's some nuggets being dropped. You got to pick it up. Some things are caught just as much as they're taught. What is Holy Spirit saying to you while you're hearing this? It's time to deal with it. Let's pray. Father, I just thank you and I just praise you right now. And I pray for the people out there today under the sound of my voice. I pray for their success. I pray for their healing right now. I pray. I pray for their healing. I pray for the healing. I pray for the healing of hearts right now. It's good to be free, Father. It's good to love those that have wrongly utilized us or done evil against us. And Father, we thank you for forgiving us even for the evil we've done to others. That we've taken ownership. Now, Father, I pray right now for that individual who felt as though that they've been alone. I pray right now for your strength, for your peace. I pray right now for a new energy, a new excitement, a new joy that comes to help them to accomplish and to achieve. I speak strength to their lives. I declare enjoyment and that the joy of the Lord is their strength and that you're the strength of their lives. So we give you praise in advance for it and we give you glory, Father. We expect something good to happen. And even as we work, we learn how to rest in you. We learn how to enjoy life. We learn, Father, how to now go forth and how to 
do great exploits for you and that we enjoy this life in abundance to the full till it overflows. This is the time, Father. This is the season. And we walk in it. So we give you praise in advance. Now, Father, I pray for those that may not know you, that have never made the Lord Jesus, the Jesus the Lord of their lives. I pray right now, let them know that there is a no-so salvation. There's a literal heaven to gain and a hell to shun. Speak to their hearts, Holy Spirit. Prick their hearts for greater, for better. And we thank you. Now, for those under the sound of my voice, I want you now, if you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, I want you to repeat this prayer of salvation after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you're the Christ, the son of the living God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you were raised from the dead for me. Come inside my heart now, Lord Jesus. I receive you as my Lord. I make you the Lord of my life. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for giving me your son. I'm saved now, in Jesus' name. Now watch this. Now I want you now to say this. Say, Holy Spirit, come inside me now. I receive you now. You're now on the inside of me. I now have the ability to speak with other tongues as you give me the utterance, to strengthen me, to equip me, to grace me mm, for success. Come on, open up your mouth and begin to Yeah, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Come on, saints, pray, pray. Wherever you are right now, pray with me, pray with me. Whether it's live, somebody's receiving, whether it's in the replay, that right now, I want this corporate gathering, this corporate anointing, even though it's virtual, I want us to come together. Let's pray. Let's pray for each and every individual that transformation and change take place in their lives in the name of Jesus. And Father, we give you praise. Glory to God. Glory to God. Now watch this, y'all. You're born again. You're filled with the Holy Spirit to live an overcoming and conquering life. And we want to help you grow in this. Contact us. Let us know, hey, I've gotten born again. You can call us. Um, I believe that, um, I don't know if we have a number that we can put up there. Or we can type it in. Type it into the comments. 804-792-0733. 804-792-0733. Call, let us know, I'm born again. I wanna, I wanna get some more information on how to grow, how to develop. You can also message us on our social media platforms. You can send us an email at info at spiritoffire.us. Info at spiritoffire.us. Let us know, I need help in growing and developing. We'll have somebody to assist you and to help you. Praise God, we wanna help you grow. Praise God. Also, make a decision. If, if you don't have a church home, but you want to feel connected, you want to be a part of something, this is where Spirit of Fire Fellowship, we're here for you. Whether you're local or whether you're global, and you know, national, international, wherever you are, you can connect with this ministry. We want to help you to grow and to develop as to who you are in Christ and to increase in those things. Amen. So if that's you and you feel as though, hey, I want to connect. I want to submit to you guys as my pastors. You've been following for a minute. And you just feel the Spirit of God leading you to God to, to go ahead and connect. Go ahead and do it. Obey the Spirit of God. Praise God. Well, y'all, we thank you so much for tuning in today. But we want to honor God also in our giving today. And we're going to take this opportunity to worship Him in our, with our financial gifts, gifts of love, tithes and offerings. Give, the Bible declares, give, and it shall be given to you again. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. That God will cause men to give unto your bosom. He says, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. Prove me now here with saith the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing and empowerment for success and prosperity, that there won't be room enough to receive it. He says this, I will rebuke the devourer. Who is the devourer? Satan. He says, I rebuke the devourer for your sake, and he shall not. Satan shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast its fruit before its time in the field, said the Lord of hosts. Meaning that when God manifests his, his goodness to you, it won't be ahead of time, behind time, it'll be right on time. And it'll be fruit that, watch this, you can enjoy. There's nothing like trying to eat unripened fruit. There's a bitterness to it. It's not, it's not ready to be consumed. And so when God manifests, you're ready for it. Glory to God. 
So at this time, there's some information coming up on the screen as to how you can sow and how you can give different opportunities and different ways to do it. Obey the spirit of God. Praise God. We believe that we're good ground and great ground to sow into. And we pray for a multiplication and increase of every seed sown. We love you guys. We appreciate you so much. We thank God for you showing up today. We don't believe it's by chance <laughs> that you showed up today, but we do believe that there'll be a word, that there's been a word that's been shared, that's blessed you. I pray that this, this has blessed you today. I had a great time ministering to it. I enjoyed ministering the word of God. I love ministering the word of God. This is my calling. This is my life, man. I was created for this. I was born to minister to the needs of people. I was born to preach the gospel, to teach and to share. And I thank God for it. I'm, I'm comfortable in my assignment. I'm sure in my assignment. Now God is calling us to take it to a broader scale, a greater level. We want to transform as many lives as we can. And I want them documented. I want lives that are impacted. I want to see lives transform and change. I want to hear testimonies. Y'all, if you have any testimonies of this word that's being preached, ministering to you and changing your life in any way, shape, fashion, or form, let us know. We want listen, we want to listen, we want to we want to praise God with you. We want to praise God with you. Well, y'all, information is up there, QR code where you can scan and go to a giving page and, and all of that different ways, and you can sow and you can give. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare increase over every seed sown. I declare right now that all is well with your people. May they grow and increase in you. I speak peace and rest upon them in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, even as we leave this broadcast, but never your presence, may your grace and peace be upon us mightily. May the angels of God watch over us, protect us, keep us, guard us, and guide us. And so, Father, we give you the glory. We give you the praise. We give you the honor for it now. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you all. Love you guys. See you next time. Peace.